Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how bacteria can be used to fight cancer in mice and how human trials are coming. So this is one of those things that fascinates me. It'll be in my sciences playlist. I will probably read it word for word, the article, maybe inject a little, you know, my two cents here and there. And try to convey how excited I am for things like this and temper it with even science outlets like this when they make their, you know, articles and stuff. They can't resist and it's part of the, you know, part of everything now. It can be clickbaity. So when I read an article and these people are using words and they're trying to convey what the science says, it can lead to exaggeration and, you know, things that are whatever. So I try to temper that with... You read an article that says, oh, human trials are coming, and they, allu they allude to, like, you know, three to five years. You might want to temper that with, you know what, maybe 11 to 15 years would be practical, where you can say, oh, you know what, oh, I could see them using this technique for certain cancers and stuff. So, in that sense, I'll get to the article. I'll just preface this by saying this should be a quick one. I will focus on this and I've been noticing because of the state of mind I'm in and I do my TV things and my movie things I'm losing focus and concentration and this is perfect to just read get through I'll definitely flub some lines and names because I'm notorious for that however I'll put the article the link to the article in my description if anybody wants to read along and sometimes these articles have underlined comments that'll lead to an abstract or the actual science of it. And then sometimes they lead to other to topics that they're talking about that might interest somebody in a different aspect or something that's connected to this in a, in a different way. So that's always good. Some of these articles have a button you can listen to someone professionally speak, speak to you about it. But like I said, I see these things, they get me excited, they make you know my brain work in an interesting way, it keeps me occupied. And then I can do a little research and see how you know true I think it is. But sometimes we need a little, you know, light at the end of the tunnel, some hope for certain things. And I have been upfront about it. I don't talk about it much in each podcast, but my fiance battled cancer for 13 out of 17 years. We were together. She lost a battle. It nearly killed me. It's still something I'm recovering from because it's just one of the latest things in, you know, life when you're 52 years old. And it's not worse than most people or other people. I'm just me, you know, trying to get by. And so these things mean something to me in certain ways. And hopefully it gives people excitement about sciences and what we're doing with medical, you know, endeavors and stuff. So, again, the article is from MIT Technology Review. It's titled, Bacteria Can Be Engineered to Fight Cancer in Mites. Human Trials Are Coming. We're crawling with microbes and scientists want to use them to treat disease. Articles by Jessica... Hamslow, uh, April 13, 2023. So right away, my interest is peaked when I see an article like this. And even when I want to do a little quick dive and hit my three-link quota and try to find out things about it, there's always a fascination to me with using what we evolved to be against certain things. And here we are, we're crawling with microbes, right? And things are going on all over us. Can we use that? And I think it's fascinating. So... I'll begin reading, like I said, I'll probably go word for word and then whatever. I'll start. There are trillions of microbes living in and on our bodies, and we might be able to modify them to help us treat diseases. Scientists have altered the genomes of some of these bacteria that live on skin, essentially engineering microbes that can prevent or treat cancer. It appears to work in mice, and human trials are in the cards. Quote, I think it's a really major breakthrough, says Julie Serg uh, Segre, a geneticist and skin biologist at the National Human Genome Research Institute in Bethesda, Maryland, who was not involved in the research. The idea of harnessing microbes to treat cancer and potentially other diseases is, quote, a very exciting new avenue for the microbiome, she says. Most research into the microbiome has focused on the trillions of bugs that live in our guts. But our skin is also home to multiple microbial ecosystems. The community that lives in your armpit could 
look quite different from the community that lives on your island. We are still figuring out exactly what these microbes are doing, but they seem to feed on our secretions, possibly produce some beneficial secretions of their own, and protect us from infections. They also appear to influence the way our immune systems work. A growing body of research suggests microbes living in and on our bodies can amplify or turn down the immune response to something that might potentially cause us harm, whether it's an infection, a tumor, or something more benign. Simply introducing a microbe to the skin of an animal can also trigger an immune response, albeit one that doesn't cause all the usual signs of an infection, like pain, fever, or sickness. This is somewhat surprising, says Michael <laughs> Fischbach at Stanford University, because these microbes don't tend to be harmful. They are our friends. Adding a microbe to the skin of a mouse, for example, can have an effect similar to giving the same mouse a vaccination, he says. Let's see, I get all nerded out and all my you know, worries go, some of my worries go away, you know. It's just fascinating that there are people in, in laboratories, good people, not trying to fuck everybody over, no politics, no nothing. They're interested in science and medical and how they could help humanity. And yes, they get paid and they're humans and they have all the flaws and whatever. But it's good to know that there are thousands of people in laboratories. All right, so I'll continue. Modified microbes. Fishbach and his colleagues wondered if they might be able to hijack this effect to tweak the immune response. The team started the investigation by choosing a microbe that is commonly found on human skin. S. epidermis <laughs> is thought to be a member of the human microbe, and it doesn't typically cause disease. The microbes the researchers used were originally collected from behind the ear of a human volunteer, says Fishbach. The researchers modified these microbes by inserting a new gene into them. The gene codes for a protein that sits on the surface of some cancer cells. The idea is that if the immune system generates cells that recognize the microbe, these cells will also recognize tumors. The team then applied these designer bugs to mice by wiping them over the heads of the animals with a cotton bud. Another group of mice had regular, unmodified samples of the bacteria smeared onto them. In both cases, the microbes quickly made a home for themselves on the mice's skin says Fishbach. At the same time, the mice were injected with skin cancer cells. These cells were taken from other mice that had cancer, so they had the target protein on their surface. Two more target. Over the following days and weeks, these cancer cells grew into tumors that the mice had been given, oh, in the mice that had been given the regular micro. But the progression of the cancer was significantly slowed in mice that had been given the engineered micro. Quote, you can see these huge tumors growing on the side of the mice that have been swabbed with normal S. epidermis, Fishbach recalls, but you couldn't see anything in the mice that have been given modified microbes, he says. He points out that this particular type of cancer is notoriously aggressive and difficult to treat in mice. He was surprised by the magnitude of the response, says Fishbach. It's surprisingly potent given how mild the treatment is. The treatment also worked in mice that already had tumors. The tumors appeared to shrink in animals swabbed with the engineered microbes. The team's findings were published in a journal of science. Again, journal of science is highlighted. You can actually go and, you know, I don't know if I'll do all this, but you can go and there's a link to that. You can get even more in depth into it. Fishbach and his colleagues have a bit of work to do before they start trialing engineered microbes in people. First, they need to find a good candidate microbe. They don't know yet if S. epidermis, epidermis triggers the same immune response in people. It's possible that another microbe might work better. They'll also have to choose a suitable cancer protein to target. This has provided a major challenge in the development of mRNA vaccines for cancer, which also rely on triggering an immune response to a cancer protein. There's often no obvious candidate. Once the researchers have worked out which microbe they'll modify and how, they'll trial it in animals to see if it's safe. Fishbach has plans to start trials of designer microbes in people with cancer within the next few years. If Marla team focuses on cancer, 
Edunia bacteria could be used to treat other diseases as well as allergies. Elaine Fuchs at the Rockefeller University in New York and her colleagues write in an accompanying commentary in Science. More research into the use of mod modified microbes, quote, could pave a way to safer, more effective, and widely applicable therapeutics, the team writes. What's exciting to us is the idea that you could just rub this behind somebody's ear and walk away, says Fishbach. And then, 10 days later, you might see a potent immune response that, in principle, persists indefinitely. See, this is by Jessica Hamslau. And yes, it's written with a certain intent, but there are links to articles, the MRSE vaccines for cancer. All these things are in here. And it's so, it sometimes gives me goosebumps to read these things. And by the way, I give no fucks about the fucking mice and the bullshit. I don't want to ever hear this fucking nonsense. Yes, I get it. In a, in a perfectly world where things are at our disposal, we don't need mice. I'm there for the argument. I don't want to hear this, oh, you know, we treat animals badly in certain certain... Yeah, I get it. I don't like the way they treat cows and chickens and all this stuff, which is rightful, and I'm not here to disargue with that. But I'm not going to fucking sit here and pretend that scientists in a lab that are using mice to do these things aren't thinking of the greater good for people. And that comes first. I'm fucking sorry. So I give no fucks about that. But again, in other levels and the nuance of things, yeah, I do. I don't like it in a sense, you know. In general. But these type of things really get my mind thinking. There's a huge, you know, avenue of things that are happening with the body and what new things will come out of sciences and research. They think one day it'll be so simple as going to a doctor, he takes your blood, and he makes for you personally whatever aspirins. Um, you know, so anything tailored made to your DNA, and that's just using the you know the theory that we're advancing what we have. Let alone in 15 years when they make nanobites, little little, little machines the size of whatever that crawls in your body after an injection and fix things or help your arteries. These things in science and technology are advancing. And sometimes, like I said, it's the nuance. Of using this and it's kind of clickbaity. He says a few years. But I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. And weigh it and temper it with. You know. This could be 10 years. And maybe. It doesn't help my fiance and stuff. But I don't want to ever. See anybody suffer. And maybe give people hope. Who are going through things. Sometimes the battle of cancer. could be quick. And it's over. And weeks and we don't know what happened it's confusing but sometimes the battle goes on for so long that so much damage is done to mental health financial security and these things happen all over in america and i live in brooklyn new york so this is part of what we deal with health care you know how important it is why it should be free and give it to everybody with all the taxes we pay and the richest countries in the world have it and we are doing shit. So things like this, this, this curiosity, this little bit of hope I see and tempering it with, okay, how long is this? What is it really doing? How are we advancing? This knowledge that there are good people in the world, whether they're, you know, you know, angry curmudgeons or peppy you know, lab students. Yes, we're all human, but their job and their their goal is to figure these things out. I'm much more interested in the truth than feelings, and that's the thing that gets me in trouble here and there. But pouring, you know, my brain into these things and doing deep dives on topics like this really opened my eyes to things. And it helps you deal with things in the past. You know, what's coming up in the future? I'm getting older. We all are, you know, seeing our friends and loved ones. We have to deal with the passing. We have to deal with change in life. So we can look to things like this. And maybe it's not this type of thing that interests you. Maybe it's 
space and nebulas and how they're trying to figure out the age of the universe and the Big Bang's not the beginning and it's just the exp Maybe it's that. Maybe it's how magicians can fuel, fool people and human behavior. Maybe it's this psychology stuff that, you know, has always been something that's interested you. I think it's worth it to take little deep dives in our lives into things that might pique our interest or help us grow and learn. I just did a podcast a couple of weeks ago about friendships and communication. You know, shitty about the things that are going on in my life, but just a nod to a, just a dedication that I'm going to commit to things and keep it on my radar. And every once in a while, go back to it and read it and get into it. We all fool ourselves. And then we're the worst enemies, especially someone like me. You know, I spent the years studying certain things, never got my degrees and stuff, but that's kind of, you know, it takes a lot more introspective dives in figuring out what am I lying about to myself. All these things that make us who we are. So doing science podcasts, talking about bacteria being used, splicing, putting a new gene in it, it's just mind-blowing to me. It makes a little bit of clarity in my life and what could be the potential of the legacy of us. How long do I have left? How long do I have my family and my friends? What will we be in 50 to 100 years, a thousand years? I let these things carry me and bring me to new places, even though I'm a dungeon master, game master, space nerd, Star Wars, Star Trek, you name it. And I like to live in my head and pretend worlds and write books and scripts and all this shit. You know, sometimes I don't draw or do art, but I like to just use my Photoshop to make little designs and thumbnails and stuff. And they're not even used because it helps me focus. Science. Reading these articles. Maybe touching somebody <laughs> in some way to get them interested in stuff and... Maybe it's something connected to your life in an ancillary way, and it's not too close to you, but it's just enough that it makes you aware of something. Maybe you're 27 years old, and you're on the cusp of what we've learned now. Maybe by 29 is when we fully mature. What changes are going to be made? What are we going to look at at the future and accept changes and new challenges? I think it starts with little things like this, hitting that link and finding out about the abstract. Of, you know, certain things and how fucking the journals are presenting the abstract. And abstracts are like the sign signs of it. And it's usually a link. Blah, 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 blah. And this can be for anything that interests you. Comets. Solar flares. How old is the Earth? It's just insanity. And I think I mentioned this in the other podcast. But I had like an hour and a half conversation with a bunch of Jewish kids from uh, the synagogue on my corner. And it got so ridiculous that every time someone passed by from the synagogue, he was like, oh, that's a rabbi. I, would, I stopped him and I said, hey, I, I'm curious, how old is the earth? And I, I, I think I told the story. You can tell he clearly lied. He was like, oh, 5,007 years old. Something. And I'm like, you know, you're a fucking, this is fucking stupid. Anyway, I'm going to sum this up and end it. And even looking at it, like I said, what if you wanted to see... um. The, you know, journal of science thing, and you're going to hit the link. And you can go, or can make this podcast even longer, right? You know, in, in that sense. And we can go into the science of it and what, what was published. Or you can just read the article for what it is and temper, temper your knowledge and, you know, how you believe and what you feel about it. In any case, I hope these things somewhat interest people. Peter, we just I babble. I might be losing my fucking focus here and there. But in general, these things interest me. They get my curiosity going. The wonder of the curiosities of every aspect of science and technology. And I hope that kind of resonates with people. Maybe it gets people to look into things. With me, you know, who knows? I think the world could be changed by knowledge and information, not beliefs and feelings for the most part. But that's where it tends to go. So in any case, I'm going to end this now. Uh, thank you so much um, for even whoever even listens to these things. I sometimes don't know if I'm like going to continue next week or not. 
is getting like that sometimes. So, in, in any case, I want to say thank you to everybody. Um, I love you all. My best to you and yours. Farewell. <laughs>